Hello everyone, welcome to a very special event, this is going to be the big reveal for the final part of Destiny 2 in the big, big story part that is. Supposedly there will be more after the final shape but as for the main storyline this is going to be the next and probably final step. Oh no, they're actually late now. Yep, they're actually late now. People saying it's on? People saying it's actually on Twitch? Uh. Twitch is saying it's starting an hour? Everyone's saying it's live on Twitch, but it's not on my screen. Let me check my phone if it's working. Oh, shit, I think it is. I'll have it. Yeah, it's loading on my phone. Oh, God, the audio is fucked. Yes. <laughs> oh, no! Oh no! People saying 360p. Oh, 360p fixes it. Cool. Doing a bit of an overview. Bit of a timeline. No. They skipped I mean, Seaver, they there. skipped Rise of Iron in the no recap. Satellites. And dust. Looks like they skipped straight to Forsaken as well. Hmm. Oh, we're about to see a uh, light, lightful, Let's see what they put for that. Isn't this Let's see what's, uh, what's new. I miscalculated. Fortunately, 360. So so protective of your traveler. Unfortunately, 360p is still the most stable. And oh my god, I look like a ghost. <laughs> the witness is coming. The game is yours to play now. Yours to win or lose. Just don't say. Let's see, I, want to get this I didn't warn you. There we go. Ho oh, ho, a hundred thousand. I think the, there's a height change into like over 30, which is crazy considering the highest height train is like 47. Flashbang us, Jesus. Still in the sub only mode. No. Where did your ghost go? Guardian, I just got the message. The Traveler is back in the last city. Is it done? Is Salvathun... She's dead. I think the most entertaining thing so away. far has been the, Good enough. the Twitch chat. Hold your position. Um, I wonder what the Twitch chat is like at the moment. Or oh, when it was live, because you're going to see this after the fact. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6... Five, four, three, two, one. I've got to keep it down because it's early and I don't want to wake up my neighbors. Thanks for tuning there in. There he is. Like many it's of Joe. you, I've been playing games Joe as Swanson. long as I can remember. They're a core part of what makes me who I am. I believe there's this deeply rooted, God, he has a big head, often unstated he? mission of games to keep adventure alive sorry if it looks now, a little washed out together on the UHD we approach monitor. the final shape so let's be clear First. about the stakes in the final shape you will go inside the traveler the journey will be difficult and what awaits you on the other side of this trek is nothing less than the deadliest entity we have ever faced there will be no open betas there aren't going to be any guides on the internet 
telling you how to handle what's to come. Whether you've been with us from the beginning, joined us somewhere along the road, or are looking at Destiny for the first time, anybody who shows up on launch day is gonna be greeted with this same uncharted world. Okay. A vacuum sealed experience begging for you to be the first person to peel Destiny it up. free? <laughs> so today, the inside of the travel is destiny free. To go forth and adventure. Mm. Mm. Wait, the, the tower? Why you were chosen. We can fly now? The truth is, I didn't know them. Evil ghost. Cal. It was just a feeling. Bro, wasting godly shot on ads. This fight might be our last. I'm asking you. What the fuck was that? Time that was those weren't guardians. To ride. What the hell? What's that axe? Is that a new fucking the subclass ability? witness entered well ahead of any guardians Bit right. and so it's had time to one of the most memorable blocalas from destiny's past is the d1 tower it's really a labor of love from the destiny team the final shape means so much to everyone who's building it we're and use assets really going to be able to see that. <laughs> the pale heart is our very first linear destination that we've ever done i would love it if players linear? felt that they began their journey in a place of safety Newton. and feel it escalate in danger in surrealness because there is this beautiful evolution of the space they see things that are more and more wrong as they begin to go towards the witnesses monolith it's kind of this omnipresent foreboding thing off in the distance exploring these spaces and you're jumping on these reshaped cuboids of earth you feel tiny Mine, as a guard. And so you're going to fight these new enemies, the subjugators. Ooh. Subjugators are the new unit you're going to be facing in the final shape. They have an enhanced power set. They're performing stasis powers and strand powers to face the guardian while in support of all the other enemies you're fighting too. So they bring Dark something version entirely of new guardians? to the battlefield, which is kind of this element of control. They're back there, pinging away with stasis abilities, throwing crystals at you, freezing you in place. Oh god, we get frozen. <laughs> Fuck. Get prepared to get fucking strand tangled. After you've reached the monolith and finished the campaign, we open up the entire destination. And so the entire okay. Pale Heart is going to react to you and what you are doing. Kind of like uh... The campaign in the final shape doesn't really end with the final mission. The raids are where you defeat like the big okay. bosses. So it's only natural that when you are going to confront the witness, you're going to do that in the raid. Okay. But that might not be enough. This is a moment where we need to rally all guardians to be able to overcome the final shape and the witness. Who are we fucking in the campaign then? The Warlock Super is this ultimate expression of solar energy coursing through your guardian. This solar Warlock Super is a callback to Radiance from D1. Other than Golden Gun, this is the only other first person super in Destiny right now. Your melee's. <laughs> Oh, like all of these South Rose returning, like doubling the amount of projectiles. Your grenade almost being sentient as it searches around, and then it hits a character and bounces back, off and goes right. to another one. And you're so overflowing with this energy that you are also giving it to your allies, allowing them to have their okay, solar weapons cool. supercharged, applying scorch when they're shooting. The new that's solar warlock aspect. Like when I cast my rift, 
it is going to create this little solar soul that solar soul enemy, finally it launches part of itself out and hits the enemy and explodes and scorches them it just feels very alive warlock mains rejoice arsenal, arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> it's a layered Super. This is the only ranged one-off offensive super for Titans in the game. The Titan jumps up into the air, summons this giant void axe, throws it, summons another one, throws it, oh, summons another one, looks at a different axe. group of enemies, throws it. And when these axes fly through the air, they stick into the ground or an enemy, do their void gravity thing where they suck a bunch of energy and enemies in and then explode. Cool. But that doesn't destroy the axe. The axe sticks around. How and much you and your allies can go and pick up that axe and start oh, wailing on enemies shit. with it. This super is insane to me. The Void Titan aspect, I press and hold my grenade button to consume my grenade and turn it into the shield. The more damage it takes, the more it charges up and then I can release that and it creates this blast that deals massive damage. Cool. The hunter arc super. Arc is all about finding the shortest distance between two points. The hunter kind of rears back, takes this knife and throws it across the world and then is able Lock to blade to its position it's coming back. through the slash that just decimates anyone nearby. Well, Link 2.0. Really that is not just you do it once, but you're able to do it three times along with devastating like attacks each time you do it. The hunter has an aspect. We take our staff, we twirl it in the air, which propels us upward. It creates a burst, which amplifies you and any allies near you. It almost makes it feel like you're playing a fighting game, right? Like these combos that you're chaining together. Essentially to do identify moves. as an it, attack like, helicopter. That, that sandbox to the next level. The more aspects we have, the more capable we are to do that. It feels like you're like riding the lightning, you know? Like that instantaneous, like. That was good, but I think it's more like. <laughs> You know? I like it. I like What's it. the sound? We have Tessellation, which is this exotic pyramid fusion rifle. It has the really intriguing property of adapting your guardian's current damage type. This will be the first time that you can run a weapon that can adapt to be strand or stasis in the energy slot. So you'll be able to run okay. an entirely strand or entirely Looks stasis void out. Tessellation has the additional property that you can special reload to uh, reshape your grenade and suck it into the weapon uh, and then fire out a super destructive like single parents. projectile. It's a really special Ooh. weapon. What? Golden gun was a sniper rifle. What if you could harness the, the might of the Traveler? You know, we had a moment where we saw that Traveler beam cutscene. I know people on weapons went, I kind of want that. You're like, that is incredibly dope. Ooh. So we've got this opportunity Flower to bring back power. these iconic Destiny 1 weapons, but <gasps> really turn it into something that feels unique in Destiny 2. We have to bring Kvastav into the fold. The Red Death exotic pulse rifle. And Dragon's Breath. Dragon's Breath's coming in the world, back! Burn it all. Kvastav's coming back! In the final shape, we have new weapon subfamilies coming, broadening what existing weapons can be. Really, like, bordering on exotic functionality. So, for example, we've got a rocket pistol sidearm subfamily. We always liked the special ammo sidearms. This fires tiny, slow-moving rockets. They hit very hard, do a bit of AOE damage. New method. They have a mixture of regular weapon and rocket launcher stats. And we're also doing a new support weapon subfamily. The support frame auto rifle is a type of legendary auto rifle. It'll let you switch seamlessly from firing at enemies to healing your allies. I'm really Ooh. excited to bring Ruin it to dead. dungeons <laughs> and keep my team alive, honestly. Shit, these are legendary. Always coming up with new ideas. We've got a ton of new cool stuff coming over the next few years, and some new and really wild ideas, which we're pretty excited about. Come on, take a load off. You've got there a lot is. to cover. Big man. It just feels so natural for Nathan to be back in the booth. It felt amazing to right. just see him slip back into the role, like without <laughs> no, missing a beat instantly. In the flesh. It's expensive it's acting now. Yeah, as it were. The, the gang being back mm -hmm. together for this moment. The gang's all here. I'm here now. Wherever the hell here is. Well, off of Amanda. Guardian, the witness poses a dire threat. And the Witch Queen holds the answers we seek. But only if 
if we contend with her sister, Zivu Araf. It rests with me. At the end of Season of the Deep, we learn that Savathun has the key to getting into the portal that we need to go into. That means we have to go find Imaru, her ghost. Imaru's like, not so fast. We've got a bigger problem first, and that bigger problem's name is Zivu Araf. If we fight her, really she only gets stronger. Eris has an idea. It's this magical deck of cards that creates amazing synergies with your build craft meta and with buffs and the activities. That's the, they the trading card game. These cards at will, whichever ones they want, and then that really leans into the build crafting. You actually are getting cards that you can then use to place on the battlefield and change the way you play. Sabbath Inspires, our new three-player offensive. You're doing a lot more with Lucent Hive Magic, but it's got a high amount of combatant density. It's got additional random encounters that you can come across. The Witch's Spire itself, Sabbath Inspire, was like her reliquary for all these different magical experiments as she was learning the light. You're there in order to learn as much as you can in order to become a master spellcaster, right? To become like Sabbath Thune. The Altar of Summonings activity is really exciting because you can spend like 20 minutes in it or you can spend two hours in it. It's a three-player experience Ooh. that you can hop in and hop out of. As you're going through this nice. activity, Robe you're light. filling the tithing bucket. Just As like... that tithing bucket is filled up, you'll get progressively more rewards. Last, last and then season. finally at the end, it'll cash out and you'll get a whole mess of rewards. Nice. Outside of just the missions themselves, is that every time we put a mission inside of that rotator, the exotic that comes alongside of it will become craftable. Oh, DMG is gonna be craftable now. Fuck. <laughs> Shit. Season of the Witch, we have a brand new Vex uh, lo-fi PvP map coming. It's really exciting. It's got a bunch of uh, really tight gameplay experiences. We wanted to make sure that we focus the combat a little bit more. All about relics. It's about multiple relics, so it's not just one like the Scorch game yes, from the past. For. So we've got the shield coming from Vault of Glass. We've got the spear back from Season of the Risen, and we've got the scythe from Season of the Haunted. Yeah. So you're gonna be <laughs> yes. guardians with that thing. It's a lot more tactical gameplay. It's all about running around the map, claiming these relic dispensers, and then grabbing them in order to uh, this push be such a for victory. Part. I, I, I will it. take what I need. We were feeling pretty hypey this season, obviously. There's something in the air. And so when thinking about like, what's a good raid reprisal that would really suit uh, this very hypey season? There's only one answer. Is it gonna be? <gasps> it's him! Protestants coming back, boys! I have seen what the hive call a god. The dungeon! <laughs> How's it gonna be this time, hmm? They're gonna change it up, I hope they do. Especially Bridge. <laughs> Rip Wrath, believers. Wrath Machine. No. Hey, they bring the um the good armor back. Nice. One of the major changes that's going to be happening starting with the final shape is there are going to be a certain number of activities that are going to be power fixed. So it doesn't matter kind of what power level you are going into it, you're always going to be able to approach it. There's still going to be tiers of difficulty that you can do, things that are just meant to be experienced a certain way. Things like nightfall strikes that will still have power enabled and that's where we're really going to focus okay, the good. whole power climb the raids no the contest modes that everybody loves to engage with that experience is fundamentally going to be staying the same fighting finder is the new feature that's coming in season 23 aimed in at game, helping LFG. connect and find other people to complete the best and most aspirational content in gambit is an option we have a tag system that allows players to be able to say well this is my play style. I'm really chill. I'm anti-sweat. Okay. I'm just really here Dude, to have a good time. <laughs> exactly. Well, that that was, really that was what commendation is going to make She's a little bit more personality. She's a little bit more about what they're about. I think what's really great about it is with this launch, we're also looking at including inclusion tags. As an example, one of the inclusion tags that we have are for colorblind players. Hopefully the inclusion tags will bring players closer to finding their community and, and even closer to the people that they're playing with. So once 
a listing goes live, players will be put into a listing lobby where players can gather, they can Key communicate up. with each other. Right. So we wanted to make it as convenient and as easy as possible for players Classic to not Xbox just sit experience. and stare at a screen for a long time while their listing actually builds oh. up. As a gamer who's yeah. typically more solo, waiting, I'm, I'm sure. just especially excited about this because it really is about helping reduce that anxiety and burden that comes with trying to make a new connection. The feature coming out today that I'm incredibly excited about is Timeline Reflections. Essentially what we have done is we went back to previous expansions and pulled out missions that we felt really represent key narrative within our story. We are going to have a mission for Sunset content, a mission for Beyond Light, as well as a mission for Witch Queen. Uh, just for Thanks sake. for the memories, Guardian. It's good because if someone's just starting now, they're going to have no clue what's happened in the past. We're reaching the end of this this ten year journey. What comes mm. next? Mm. The episodes yeah. and the new way we're going to tell stories moving forward. What's really important about episodes is that it's a really big shakeup to what we've been doing. Instead of providing four seasons a year, you are going to get three larger episodes. And so the first three episodes in this coming year are called Echoes, Revenant, and Heresy. It's coming right after the final shape. And the theme for the year is gonna be all about the consequences and aftermath of the final shape. I think what's really the cornerstone of the episode model that we're building is the three act structure. The acts act as these anchors for us to introduce new weapons, new artifact mods, new activities. There's gonna be new missions coming around the core. There'll be new story moments in every single one of these acts. We're actually providing more cinematic styled experiences throughout the final shape year and the episodes with it than any of the seasons we've ever developed before. These new stories are actually playable as standalone. Like each episode is something you can experience whether you've been playing Destiny for 10 years or this is your first one. You're gonna be able price. to basically enjoy them in any order you want to. I think the opportunity with this big epic moment is that we <laughs> get to innovate season. the game. We get to move the game forward. It's all about change frequently. It's all about deeper story moments. It's all about more weapons, more loot, more often. And it really provides the team with a platform to go much deeper into the themes and fantasies and stories Isn't this what of any with individual Valve episode as though? compared to the seasons you know of well. today. I think some people look at the final shape and they think Destiny 2 is coming to the end. And in many ways, it's the opposite. Kinda we're leaning wish in. It we're is putting the, end, the pedal to the metal. Episodes provide us a new, innovative way for players to engage with Destiny 2 throughout the year. It's going to be an exciting year for Guardians. We get to make good on a promise that we made way back in 2014. There was classic rock blasting, a fire team racing across our solar system, and at the end, a simple message. Become legend. Today, you got a glimpse at how we'll be cementing your legend in this upcoming year. We're going to be heading inside the Traveler, experiencing a destination unlike anything we've ever built before. We'll face the biggest bad we've ever made, and we'll do this all alongside a streamlined progression system, allowing us to easily play with friends in any content in the game. And as the dust settles in the final shape, we're gonna continue our legends in Echoes. It's Destiny's first episode in a new phase of storytelling for Guardians with brand How new conflicts born from the resolution of the Light and Darkness saga. These first episodes are just the beginning. But if you're chomping at the bit to see how the light and darkness saga is gonna kick off the future of Destiny 2, we've got a ton of great content for you to jump into today. Going live after this, we've got Season of the Witch with a new story, new weapons, new armor, new activities, and new PVP content all alongside a series of story catch-up missions allowing any of your friends to jump into the game and get up to speed on what's happening in this world. Not entirely up to speed. Next week, a brutal reprisal of Crota Zen next is going to join the ranks of our aspirational content. I can't wait to see you all in the throne world as we learn more about the final shape and how we can stop it. It makes it sound like we're going to learn about how the final shape is going to work in Crota Zen. Oh. You ready to spend the big bucks? <laughs> Get out your wallets. So this year we're doing a Destiny 1 tower. 
We really try to work hard at thinking about 10 years of destiny and how best to encapsulate that experience. And then there are actual figures of the Vanguard mentors that accompany that architectural model. There's oh, a lot of like hidden ass. messages and hidden things. There's uh, gonna be some fun surprises. We're always trying to push the envelope. And so we've been playing a lot with magnetic locks and uh, oh God, sound effects, and lights, <laughs> just sort of make this experience as a whole yeah. um, really special. It's sort of the perfect symbol of Destiny. $1,000, pre-order now. So probably the collector's edition, at least the digital, will probably have next year's, um, will have the episodes. Part of me kind of wants the series to end and end on a bang. You know, it's always better to end on a high note. And I do have a little bit of concerns, like episodes might subtract from if the final shape is a banger, which I'm sure it will be. Um, you know. But yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Is there going to be a big boss fight in, in the actual campaign? Interesting, the going linear and then opening the space up afterwards.